Soybeans were first grown by U.S. farmers as cattle feed, but today more soybeans are grown in the United States than anywhere else in the world. And did you know that soy has as much protein as milk, meat, and eggs? Yeah, and all eight essential amino acids for human health and growth. Very little of soybean meal is used for human consumption though. Most of it is used for livestock feed, animal feed, all different types of livestock. And we're gonna find out just how that works right now. Shall we? Let's do it. Really? <laughs> Very cool. Now before soybeans can be processed, they must be dried, cleaned, and cracked as we see being done on this machine. Once the beans have been through this process, they are ready to go through a machine called da -da -da, the extruder. The extruder basically cooks the soybeans with a process called extrusion heat. And this is done for two important reasons. Soybeans in their natural state contain enzymes that make them hard to digest. They also don't taste the greatest. But when heat is applied to the soybeans, these enzymes become inactive, making it easy for animals and people to eat the meal that's created. Let's take a look at how the extruder works. Here we have the extruder's main drive shaft. Elements of the screw are assembled on this shaft. Now as the screw rotates around this close-fitting barrel, heat is created by the friction, taking the soybeans from ambient, or room temperature, to about 145 degrees Celsius, or 293 degrees Fahrenheit, in less than 30 seconds. The soybean material created by the extruder passes through this die, which is located at the end of the barrel. Now it's important that this die is carefully calibrated before the soybean passes through the extruder. Now we're ready to see the extruder in action! In a typical processing environment, soybeans are continuously fed into the extruder. They can control how fast the soybeans are fed into the machine using a direct current control. From the feeder, beans are fed into the screw and barrel. These gauges located on the barrel help the operator see how hot beans inside the barrel are getting. What we are seeing here is full fat soybean meal being created as it comes out of the dye. This meal contains all of the soybeans original oil. If soybeans are processed without removing the seed coat or hulls, this soybean meal could be used for high protein animal feed. But if the seed coats have been removed, however, this meal would be acceptable to use in some products that you and I could eat. Another benefit of sending soybeans through the extrusion heat process is that it breaks down the oil in the soybean, allowing us to simply press the oil from the meal. We do that with a machine called a screw press. Like the extruder, the press functions by rotating a screw within a barrel, but it doesn't get hot. Soybeans are continuously fed into the machine from a conveyor, separating it into oil and meal. Oil is pressed out through the barrel cage, and the leftover meal, called press cake, is passed through. High-end screw presses can get the oil content in this final press cake down to as low as 6%, making it a very low-fat option. The oil extracted by this process is slightly colored due to naturally occurring pigments and has a nice tasting nutty flavor to it. In fact, many countries directly consume the oil just as it is. The press cake that comes from the screw press can be milled into soy flour. Before that can happen though, the meal must be cooled. To do this, the press cake is tumbled in this horizontal drum and cooled by the air. A simple hammer mill can be used to turn the soy meal into low-fat soy flour. Now remember, this meal has very little oil in it. If we were milling full-fat soybean meal, a much more expensive and sophisticated milling system would have to be used to turn the meal into flour. This low-fat soy flour is an ideal protein supplement for foods worldwide, and many countries, the United States, Asia, Africa, and South America are using processes just like this to create it. As you've learned throughout this series, soybeans are used for an awful lot more than just human and animal consumption. Come on, let me show you what I mean. Okay, we just came from the plant where we saw how soybeans are split into soybean oil and soybean meal. And now we're at Early Bird Feed and Fertilizer in Goodfield, Illinois, and we're gonna continue the process. Hi Steve, nice to meet you, how you doing? Hi, nice to hey. meet you. So tell me what you do here. I'm a nutritionist here at Early Bird, mix rations and uh, formulate some diets. Okay, okay. What's going on back here? Well, we're unloading a load of bean meal right now. All right, well, how much do you get of that stuff? Oh, we get uh, 25 ton loads in on semis. 
about how often does it come in? Uh, we get a load every week or 10 days. Okay, and that's processed into different kinds of feed? Yes. Okay, what do you got here? Mm -hmm. This is a... Oh, that's what it looks like, What huh? it looks like. It's a meal. It's a ground up soybean. Smells pretty good, too. We're going to go on inside and see how they use computers and, and the high-tech part of this, of this business to create different, uh, different types of feed for different livestock. Ready to go? Okay. We'll see you inside. Okay, so we're here in the nerve center, the brain, the heart and soul of this operation, in the office with Steve again. And, and we've got a computer and we've got a, a panel with all kinds of buttons and dials and stuff on it. So what does all of this do? Well, the computer is going to mix the diet for us based on the specific ration that we plugged into the computer for it to make. Okay. Now, a while back you said to me that there were three, there used to be three phases of, of growth that were, that were met and by three different types of feed. A starter, a growth period, and a finisher. But now there are as many as eight. Why is it so much more complicated now? Well, research has uh, shown that uh, we can optimize growth by fine-tuning the diet so that each level of the pig's life we can uh, optimize growth and okay. produce uh, uh, optimum returns to the producer. Okay, makes sense. Now, we're talking a lot of here about hogs and hog feed and stuff. I think it's because of the fact that 82%, 82% of the soybean meal in the United States is used for hog feed. And a lot of that in central Illinois is done right here. And I've noticed something else. There's a big flashing red button up there, and I'm not one to big, ignore big flashing red buttons. What would happen if I pushed that? Then you'll tell the computer to make the diet. Can I do it? Go ahead. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so we just came out of the office, and the computer has told us what we need to mix as far as uh, creating a specific ration for a specific type of feed. So. Now what happens? Well, back here we have all the augers. The computer will run each auger, so that each uh, individual ingredient will have a certain target weight. So we'll okay. put it that much of each ingredient in, and then we'll go over here. What Clarence is doing here is putting our micro ingredients in. Micro ingredients. I like that term. What's that all about, Steve? Well, the micro ingredients that he's putting in be your vitamins and minerals that oh. we will add to the diet. So why do they call them micro ingredients? Because they're a small fraction of the total weight of the diet. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Well, let's let him do his thing, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, we're here in the feed mill, and. Um, Behind us is the bagging machine, and you saw that how that was all bagged once the mix is all set and the ration's all set. And I just want to know now, where does it go? Well, once we've got it bagged up here, we'll either uh, load this up on our delivery truck and deliver it out to the farm. Okay. Or we, some of our customers will come in here to Early Bird and pick it up, and uh, we'll load it into their truck. Well, I'm impressed. I've learned an awful lot about how this all takes place, and we're going to continue that as we go to Franmar Chemical and find out how soybean oil is made into all kinds of other end-use products. So, ready? Let's do it. Well, we just found out how soybeans are split up into soybean oil and soybean meal. Well, we're here at Franmar Chemical in Bloomington, Illinois, and we're going to go inside where it's a heck of a lot warmer, and we're going to find out just some of the amazing things they do with soybean oil to make clean, green, safe industrial cleaners. Come on, let's go. Hey, Jason. I'm How Barry. you doing? How you nice doing? to meet nice you, Barry. To meet you. Yes. Well, it's a lot warmer in here than it was out there, and now we're inside at Franmar Chemical. A lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Now, I didn't tell you who this guy was. This is Jason, and he is the marketing manager here at Franmar Chemical. Franmar Chemical, this is a unique place. They take soybean oil, and you wouldn't believe what they do with it. So, first of all, Jason, what's the background of the company? Um, the company started making cleaners, obviously, from soybean oil. Okay. Uh, the idea was to replace petroleum cleaners ah. that are harsh, caustic, to people using dangerous. it. Dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. And then making, finding alternatives and making them with soy oil. Great. So we're turning caustic products into green alternative products. Awesome. Uh, we make about 42 different yeah. products. Uh, 
all kinds of different uh, uses for the yeah. products themselves. And you sell them all over the world, right? All over the world, yes. That's yes. great. Uh, seven different industries. So we uh, make products for the restoration industry mm -hmm. as far as remodeling old homes, taking paint and mastic off. Wow. So we have a paint stripper made from soybean oil. No way. Yes. We have a soy lotion, so it's a lotion made from soybeans. Okay. Um, we have a hand sanitizer. Oh, everybody's familiar with that. Oh, yes. Sure. Yes. Um, we also have uh, boat cleaners for the Bo marine industry. Yes. Boat cleaners? Boat cleaners. Okay. And then we have a, uh, another fun product is a adhesive remover called Icky Sticky Unstuck. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fantastic name. I love you it. You cannot forget that. Icky Sticky Unstuck. That's yes. great. That's great. Okay. What else? Um, well, we're in seven different industries. We have uh, asphalt cleaners. So yeah. on the roads, all the cars on the roads, we have cleaners that clean that asphalt. Oh, really? Yes, make it much easier and Boy. safer for the road workers. Um, and it's all green. It's, it's all, all green. It won't hurt you if you breathe it in nope. or anything like that? No odors, won't burn your skin, just completely safe. And it's all from soybeans. It's made from soybeans. Okay, Jason, now we're standing in front of this monstrous vat. This has got to contain something. What do you put in here? This vat right here holds 7,000 gallons of transesterified oil. <laughs> you just made that up. Right? No, I didn't. <laughs> what is it again? Transesterified oil. Basically, as you've been learning, uh, when you crush the soybean, you get the uh -huh. meal and the oil. Right. Okay, we take the oil and we take the glycerins okay. and the soaps out of that oil and we get what's called ester. So and what does that do? So ester is a very good cleaning solvent. Wow. So we use the ester in making all of our products. Okay, and you said another word, term, that I've got to have you say again. What was that other term? Super infused surfactants. Yeah, okay. <laughs> super infused surfactants. Yes. yes, they make super infused surfactants here, folks. What's that? Uh, basically, super infused surfactant is a soap. A soap. It's very simply, it's just a soap. And we blend soaps into the oil to help in the cleanup process. So it's no different uh, if you were cooking in your home right. and you spilled cooking right. oil on sure. your counter, you're going to use soap to clean it up. Because it won't come up any other it way. It won't come up very well. So we oh. blend the two together and just makes that much better of a cleaning product. And it's still all green. It's still all green, yes. Oh man. So after it leaves this tank, mm -hmm. it goes over to this tank? Correct. And we what have, happens there? Well, we have numerous different mixing vats over here, okay. depending on how big of a quantity of a cleaner that we're making. All right. And the chemistry gets pumped over here, and okay. it gets blended in these different vats, and then it goes to our packaging department. Okay. Jason, thank you very much for having You're us. You're very welcome. Today. We appreciate it. We have learned a lot. Yes. You've enlightened <laughs> us. All kinds of interesting All stuff. All right, that's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see, folks, how soybeans are part of our everyday life, not just food not just animal feed, all kinds of stuff are made out of soybeans. So now we're gonna hit the stores, see if we can find more soy food products and more interesting stuff that soybeans go into. Join us as we continue our journey to find out how soybeans go from pod to plate. Thanks a lot, see you later.